Today you're going to learn how to create this dark mode switch. And notice how the button even changes its icon depending on what theme is applied. The most important aspect of this video is the fact that the website will also save the theme that we chose. So when we come back to this website after a few days, the dark mode will still be applied. Closing or refreshing the page doesn't hurt our dark mode. To do that, I have already prepared this very basic website. The first thing you need to take care of is writing clean CSS code by using custom properties in the root. Now, every color of this website has its own variable. This is basically my color palette for the light mode. Every time I want to use a color, I will use the var method to reference the respective variable, because that will now allow me to change the entire website's color theme by just changing the colors up here. One change will modify every element that uses this variable. Let's use this concept by declaring a class dark mode. We can copy and paste the entire color palette to override every color. Now I choose a dark base color, a dark base variant, the text color is white, and so on. So this class will overwrite my color palette to be a dark mode. We can see this effect by going to our HTML code to manually add the class dark mode to the HTML body. This will apply the dark color theme, because now we are overwriting all the variables. Removing the class will bring us back to the light mode. Now we need to create a button for this. It has the ID, theme switch, and we'll get two child elements, the moon icon and the sun icon. So let's go to fonts.google.com slash icons. I search for dark mode, select the icon, enable fill to have it colored properly, and download as SVG. The same thing for light mode. Select, fill, download. Once we have the SVGs in Visual Studio Code, you can open them and copy the entire element that is inside. It looks very complicated, but it's just how icons look in HTML. We insert both icons into the button. The first one is the moon icon, and the second one is the sun icon. Remember this for later, because we only want to show one of them. Now I go to our CSS code to style the theme switch. Turn it into a 50 by 50 pixels square, no padding, border radius 50% to have a perfect circle, apply a background color, and use flexbox to center the icon inside. The button uses fixed positioning to have it in the top right corner. You can also select the SVG icons inside, and use their fill property to change the color of the icons. Now we only want to show one icon, so we need to hide the icon that we don't want to show. In the light mode, I want to see the moon icon, so I have to hide the sun. Theme switch, SVG, last child, display none. This will hide the last child, meaning the sun icon. When the dark mode is applied, it's the other way around. So dark mode, theme switch, SVG, first child, display none. And in the dark mode, the last child will have a display block to make the sun icon visible. Using this logic, only one icon should be visible at a time. We can test this behavior by going to the HTML code again and add and remove the class dark mode. Now we need JavaScript to add and remove the dark mode class when the user clicks the button. We're also going to use local storage to save the theme. The local storage is the browser's storage system. Let's reference a JavaScript file, dark mode JS. And very important, use the defer attribute to execute the code only after the HTML code has finished loading. We also have to create the file darkmode.js. First and most importantly, we have to get the current theme from local storage. Let darkmode equals local storage dot get item dark mode. So if we have a dark mode theme stored, then we will get it into this variable. We also need our button const theme switch equals document dot get element by id theme switch. The button will receive an event listener. When the button is clicked, we want to execute this code. Here we use an if condition to ask if dark mode does not equal active. Then we want to call the function enable dark mode, which we are going to create soon. Else, so the dark mode is active, we want to call disable dark mode. Now we have to define both of these functions. And by the way, if you have never seen this JavaScript syntax before, it is the same thing as writing a simple if condition. If this condition here is true, do this, the colon means else, do that. It's just way shorter writing it like this. Now let's create these functions. The enable dark mode function will simply address the document.body.classlist to add the class dark mode. We also have to call local storage.setItem dark mode. We want to save the string active. The local storage system can only store strings. Initially, I wanted to store a simple boolean, true or false, if the dark mode is active. But we can only store strings here. So we just say active. Now to disable the dark mode, we do the exact opposite. 
the disable dark mode function is going to use this code document.body.classlist.remove dark mode. So here we are removing the class dark mode from the body. We also need to set this in local storage. So dark mode will be null. With this code, we can add and remove the class dark mode in the body. And we also store the theme in the local storage. But there is still a problem. We are not actually loading the theme anywhere. We are only setting it. Our code of adding and removing a class only happens on click. But when we visit the website for the first time, it should already apply the theme that is stored in the local storage. Currently, we are getting the theme into the first variable here at the top. This will be either active or null. So we have to ask if dark mode triple equals active, then enable dark mode. This will enable the dark mode if it is stored in the local storage. But we also need to get the info from the local storage inside the event listener. Because the dark mode variable is only being updated when we first enter the website. But we're actively changing the local storage every time we hit the button. So when clicking the button, we should update the dark mode variable with whatever is stored in the local storage at this moment. And then we use this variable to check if the dark mode is active or not. And with this simple JavaScript code, we should have a functioning dark mode switch that stores and loads the theme properly. This was coding to go And if you have learned something new today, like and subscribe and watch this video right here to learn more about web development.